So for the conclusion of our work today, we just want to show you how to get the free calcium concentration that remains in a solution where the calcium has been complexed by EDTA. And we're going to show you how to use conditional formation constants to calculate that. So in our example today, we're going to, want to calculate the concentration of free calcium in a solution where there is a 0.1 molar calcium EDTA complex solution. And we, we want to find the free calcium concentration at pH equals 4 and pH equals 10. The other piece of information that we're given in the setup is we're given the KF, the equilibrium formation constant value for the calcium EDTA complex, and that is 1 times 10 to the 10.65. All right, so before we begin the calculation, it's always a good idea to jot down some basic pieces of information and make sure you have them right. Okay, so we know that we're going to be using the conditional formation constant to find the calcium concentration. And the conditional formation constant is found by taking the alpha value for Y4 minus and multiplying it by the formation constant for calcium. The balanced chemical equation that's relevant to this problem is calcium 2 plus plus EDTA forms the calcium EDTA complex. And from tables 12.1 and 12.3, we know that at pH 10, the alpha value is, 10, is 0 0.30 and the formation constant value is 10 to the 10.65. At pH 4, the KF is no different, but the alpha value is different, so the, formation, the conditional formation constant will be different. So at pH 4, we have the alpha Y4 minus value at 3 times 10 to the minus 9th. Same, condition, same formation constant at that pH. So we use those two values to calculate the conditional formation constants at each pH. And at pH 10, K prime F is going to be equal to 0.3 times 10 to the 10.65. Uh, if you're doing the math right there, that should work out to be 1.34 times 10 to the 10th. If you do the same thing at pH 4, you have alpha value of 3.0 times 10 to the minus 9th times the same formation constant. The conditional formation constant at a pH of 4 is much lower. It's only 134. Once we have our conditional formation constants, we can use standard equilibrium problem logic to calculate the concentration of calcium that remains in solution. So we're going to use a modified ice table. Our formation constant broadly takes the form of the calcium EDTA complex in the numerator, concentration of free calcium, times concentration of unreacted EDTA in the denominator. Obviously, to solve this problem, the concentration of free calcium is what we're trying to ca calculate at each pH. Regardless of the pH, the setup of the equation takes the same basic form. We're told in the problem that the concentration of the calcium EDTA complex is 0.1 molar. That's going to be key to solving the problem. So our initial conditions are calcium and EDTA are at 0 molar. The concentration of the calcium Y2 minus complex is 0.10 molar. We're going to assume that any free calcium in solution then is going to be the result of the back reaction of that calcium EDTA complex to release calcium back into solution. So to simplify the mathematical treatment, we make a common assumption that we've made before in equilibrium, in equilibrium problems that says, initially the reaction goes to completion, then Le Chatelier's principle causes the equilibrium to be reestablished, and our product breaks apart, releasing some of the reactants back into solution. So at equilibrium, we assume then that there have been X moles of calcium lost from the calcium EDTA complex. Therefore, the calcium EDTA complex concentration becomes 0.1 minus X. And since the calcium and EDTA are coming from the same place, the calcium concentration is X, the EDTA concentration is X at equilibrium. And now our equilibrium constant is going to take the form 0.1 minus X in the numerator x squared in the denominator. To find the concentration of free calcium, we're going to set the value of the conditional equilibrium constant equal to 0.1 minus x divided by x squared. So we're just setting the value of the conditional equilibrium constant equal to the equilibrium constant expression. We're calling the concentration of calcium x. We're going to solve this expression for x. You could do it explicitly 
with quadratic equation. One thing that you can almost always do, though, in an EDTA conditional uh, formation constant calculation is that because the conditional formation constant is generally so large, you can make the assumption that X is very small compared to the concentration of CAY2 minus that remains uh, undissociated. And so we can simplify our numerator from 0 0.10 minus X to just 0 0.1. In general, this is a much better assumption at pHs above 6 than it is at pHs in less than 5. But to make our life easier, we'll assume that in both cases. It's a great assumption in basic pHs. It's only an okay-ish assumption at acidic pHs. But most EDTA titrations, as we'll see, are run at pHs above 6. So generally, when you're using this equilibrium constant expression in the numerator, you can assume that that minus x term is negligible compared to the 0.1. And then if we make that assumption, our equilibrium constant expression becomes 1.34 times 10 to the 10th times x squared. We just multiplied both sides of the equation by x squared to get that is equal to 0.1. Doing the math then, we then get x, which is equal to the calcium 2 plus concentration, is equal to the square root of 0 0.10 divided by the conditional formation constant, which at pH 10 is 1.34 times 10 to the 10th. And we find that at pH 10, or concentration of uncomplex calcium at equilibrium is 2.73 times 10 to the minus sixth molar. Based on my calculations, I find that at pH 4, the calcium 2 plus concentration is equal to 0 0.027 molar, which again would suggest that our assumption that it's negligible compared to the 0.1 molar concentration of the calcium Y2 minus complex is negligible is not a great assumption. It introduces a significant amount of error into the calculation. And so in general, this provides an illustration of why it's important and useful, more useful to perform EDTA titrations at neutral and basic pHs, because there the Y4 minus form predominates, and EDTA is significantly better at complexing metal ions at above pHs of 8, up to about pH 11 or 12, depending on the metal ion, than it is at more acidic pHs. In general, though, this is an approach that you can use to find the calcium concentration or any free metal concentration in a solution of a metal EDTA complex at equilibrium. And in general, these problems are a little easier to solve at basic pHs than they are at acidic pHs. So we'll mostly be asking you to deal with basic pHs because that's where EDTA titrations are performed.